Hello, my name is Mars, and welcome back to Vern, The Shape of Fantasy. I forget what our objective is. Search the log in the chart room, that's right. Um, if I talk to the doctor, he's going to tell me, go to your room, get some rest. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be naughty. We learned in the last one... Oh. Vern, I knew I'd find you here. How are you? What has the doctor said? I'm fine. I just need some... Oh, good. I'm afraid that it will have to wait. What happens? Officer, we are to the hold room immediately. Ah, oh, this never stops. Vern, I revised my notes. Maybe if we dig more into the ship that carried the chest and the compass, maybe we can find out another way to open it. Just in case the iMag doesn't work anymore. Not a bad idea. Officer, please, the now. Oh, bloody... Oh, do me a favor. The captain keeps a very detailed record of the Greek ship's history. Please, take a look. See what you can find. Officer, Adriel! I'm coming! I'm coming! Search into the closet. Look for the log. <laughs> I don't envy her job. That's for sure. All right. What's our mission? Our mission is going to be search the chart room, right? Yeah, the log in the chart room. Let's look at the map. We are there, and the chart room is way up at the top. Okay, can I take the elevator? Thank God, the oh, elevators there. are still working. Oh, I can't go up to the bridge. Why isn't this moving? Um. There we go. There we go. It, the arrow keys were not working for some reason. There's that lady working on her stuff. So this is the chart room, and we have to look here. Ooh, at the map of Hamera. So it looks kind of like the real world. So the Americas, North America is the American Empire. South America is the Eternal Land. Europe is the nation. Africa is the Golden Empire. There's the Dragon Sea, which looks like an actual dragon face. Japan is the Rising Sun Empire, of course. There's the colonies. And a lot of stuff is uncharted. Hmm. Okay. I still have some stuff to do. Okay. It's gotta be in here, right? Yes, the log. That's all the records we have about the Scylla, the Greek ship. But these are the same papers that... Ooh, wait, what does this mean? This note. Important info in audio cylinders 399, 244, and 219. Audio cylinders, are those these? Sub-Lieutenant Ned Land speaking. Documentation record regarding the Ancestor's Island. This is the place in which everything tells us that the flame of Hephaestus lies in. It's not only protected by those so-called ancestors, but also it's located at the center of a magnetic anomalies area that drives navigation devices mad. And to make matters worse, the island is also surrounded by huge currents and fog banks, making it virtually unreachable. Who's this Ned Land? I can't recall that name in the crew. I would guess that might be a, a Vern character. Like, like Nemo. I'm not entirely sure, so don't quote me on that. Sub-Lieutenant Ned Land speaking. Documentation record regarding the Compass of Destiny. According to our research, this compass, crafted with a mineral only found in the Ancestor's Island, always points to it as if it was its own north. This, combined with a coordinate system, was used by the few ships that still traded with the island. Nothing new, but what happened to this officer? There was one more tape, right? Um... Wasn't there a third tape? I still have some stuff to do. Could it be down here? Yeah. This is... 
I still have some stuff to do. Oh. Sub Lieutenant Ned Land speaking. Documentation record regarding the flame of Hephaestus. In historical records and legends, it is told that the Atlantean people found in the ancestors' island an amazing energy, which they called the flame of Hephaestus. Its implementation allowed them, in a few years, to develop unimaginable technology. It moved their ships and the gigantic machinery that built their city and harvested large crops. They also created a system of extraction. I must record this here. Today, I have found something that... It may change it all. I was with the communication system, routine maintenance, when I locked on a very strange signal. It, it sounded almost like a voice, but it was only noise. But, oh God, Captain has replied and they've been talking like he understood that horrible sound. It seemed like they were talking about picking up a load at a certain point of the Indian Ocean. And the Captain was constantly repeating a name, Vern. Oh. I haven't recognized the other voice, but I can't believe it. Nemo is not a traitor. I must confirm this before saying anything. We are about to dock at the secret base. If there's any evidence against Nemo, it will be there, in his office. I hope that they don't catch me, and that I'm wrong, too. What? What have I just heard? Was Nemo waiting for me in the middle of the sea? I thought we were just incidentally picked up by the Nautilus. My brothers, I know you are afflicted. Shame fell on us because we failed in our mission of capturing terrorist Nemo. I know because I felt the same dishonor. But I have had We didn't suffer a defeat. Fate revealed our true mission in front of our eyes. The artifact is a prodigy that can change destiny. We have been spending our lives under the boot of politicians and bureaucrats of the curia of the nation, those who just exist to fill their bellies at the expense of our blood. I say, let's take the artifact and forge a new world based on order and purity! Are you with me, brothers? So it makes you wonder, who's the good guy here? Those I... days, my sanity felt like walking on a glass floor. I discovered that no one in the crew had ever heard talk about Officer Ned Land. If that was not enough, the recordings disappeared and left me with no other evidence of it than my damaged memory. Somebody was pulling the strings of my fate. What did they want from me? I had to find out before it was too late. I could just follow Ned Land's advice, search into Nemo's office and bring the truth to light. Whatever it was. Hmm. In the entrails of the mystery. That certainly looks like entrails. I must leave my plans for breaking into Nemo's office for later. The captain and Edriel want to meet me. Yeah, so my thought is who's the bad guy here and who's the good guy? I don't think it's Nemo. I certainly don't think the good guy... I certainly don't think the good guy is Raven. Does anyone want to use whatever is in this chest for good? It's not the time to go back to the Nautilus. I still have things to do here. Is Vern the only one who can learn how to use the iMag for good? My first trip outside and it's inside of a dormant volcano in the middle of the ocean. I have to admit that Nemo has a talent for Mizon Sen. I'm not entirely sure what that phrase means, but if it's that he's got a sense of showmanship, 
I agree. Anything to look at here? These boxes? No. What room is this? A storage room? A lab? An old diver helmet from the first missions of the Nautilus. I've only seen them on paper. They look so much more rudimentary. I'm glad I've learned diving with the new ones. Hi, lady. Mr. Vern. What obscure sea law have I transgressed now, Officer Turner? More than one, probably, but I don't want to talk about that, sir. I didn't have the time to show my gratitude for saving us from the nation. When we rescued you, I thought you were a spy. If it were up to me, I would have returned you to that boat and let the sea judge you. Oh, I'm glad you weren't the one who decided my fate. But look what you have achieved with the captain. Solved Placea's temple puzzles, found the compass of destiny, saving us from the raven himself. It feels like centuries ago since you came from that island. I'm glad that you are aboard, sir. Oh, well, thank you. Each day it's harder to recall my past life. That's something we all share in here. Captain Nemo slowly absorbs our lives and blends them inside the Nautilus's steel. Um... Do you know where the captain is? I must see him. But I don't know this prodigious hideout. The captain and Edriel are in the meeting room. Go to the elevator, second floor on the left. I keep thinking about Officer Ned Land. Mr. Vern, for the last time, stop chasing ghosts. Perhaps you should visit the doctor again. There's never been a crew member called Ned Land. That's weird. You may now leave, Mr. Vern. I have a lot of things to do. The captain and Edriel passed by here not too long ago. Go to the elevator, second floor on the left. Thank you, officer. Okay, so Maddie just mentioned solving Placia's temple puzzles. I don't think that's a thing we've done yet. So I'm getting the feeling that a lot of this game is going to be told, its story is going to be told via flashback, which is interesting. Are they this way? What's this? I must admit that cans of algae mix are delicious, but if someday I leave the Nautilus, it will take a long time until I eat something from the sea again. Cool. Alright, yeah, this is just a storage room. But we take the elevator to see them. Oh, I don't know what floor they're on. The infirmary, maybe? Pfft, Nemo and safety hatches. It must reach the lower floor. Will that be important later, maybe? These are the results of cholera vaccine tests. Seems that with the algae we harvested underwater, Dr. Cedric is making major advances. Wait, this isn't the same room that we were being examined in, is it? That, this is off the ship. We were on a, an infirmary on the ship. I don't think this is the same room. Why does Dr. Cedric have two infirmaries? I'm confused. Mm. Okay. It looks like a piece of a diary from the builders of the base. Ooh, collectible. The Volcano Exploration Report. 12.27 p.m. Before us opens a deep hollow. It is the rugged mouth of the crater by which the eruptive liquid matter had escaped at the periods when the volcano was still in activity. Hardened lava and crusted scoria form a sort of natural staircase of large steps, which will greatly facilitate the ascent to the summit of the mountain. As to the volcano itself, it cannot be doubted that it is completely extinct. No smoke escapes from its sides, not a flame can be seen in the dark hollows, not a roar, not a mutter, no trembling even issues from this black well, which perhaps reaches far into the bowels of the earth. The atmosphere inside the crater is filled with no sulfurous vapor, it is more than the sleep of a volcano. It is its complete extinction. All right. Any other logs? I, I'm going to miss some collectibles here and there. That's unavoidable, basically. I'm not that thorough. Ooh, new side mission? What's that? Can I see? Okay. Okay. 
is this find the other two audio cylinders. Was that an audio cylinder that I just found? Okay, I'm probably not going to find them here. So, I don't remember. What floor were Ezreal and the captain on? I would like to go there last. Because now I know there's stuff to find. There's another guy. May I help you? It seems you have problems with whatever that is. It's an Illumian. Towers that distribute blue blood through the decks of the Nautilus. And no, you can't help me. But thanks, anyway. It's okay. I'll leave you working. He seemed real mad. Join the Nautilus. Resist the tyranny of the nation. Cool. That box looks like it has a puzzle on it. The one I'm standing next to. That looks like a maze of some sort. What's that written on the wall? Can't see it. Each capsule's ready. Oh. Vern! About Oops. time. I wanted to go I up the ladder. Sorry. It's my first time here. What do you want from me? Are the H capsules ready? Not completely. We still have to fit some details. But I'm sure that we will be able to gather the energy from the flame of Hephaestus and contain it to take it wherever it's most needed. You must be extremely careful. Yes, I know the story. It was the source of the power of the Atlantean Empire and also of its ominous destruction. You've told me that a dozen times. You must make sure that they will be ready when we dock at the Ancestor's Island. And what will happen if the iMag doesn't work anymore? How will we open the chest? I haven't found anything in the Scylla's log that could help us. The iMag will work! I am sick of waiting! Captain, your idea of using the blue blood to reactivate the iMag is unfounded. The reaction could end with all of us being... Enough! I don't want to hear you anymore! I'm fed up with you, with Cedric, with Vern. We must take radical action if we want to end the terror that is devastating the world. Please, Captain, calm down. You are not like this. I will not hear you, not even for a second. I am going to prepare the blue blood. If you aren't at the upper floor safe room in 10 minutes, I will go and look personally for you wherever you are. It's the last lift. I give you my personal card. Cool. My God, what's with him? The captain is under a lot of pressure. Don't question him. Obey. <laughs> I am also worried. I have my doubts about the capsules. I'm not doubting your abilities, but the transportation of these energy-filled monsters is something that keeps me awake at night. I need you to analyze the only Ancestors Island map to find out the safest route to the flame, D3 area. That map is pure fantasy. Sometimes fantasy is all we've got. You have your orders. Elevator card, nice. Okay. Can we look around a little bit more? Mert, obviously, it's closed. If I could get an access card. Do I have an access card? Mert, obviously, it's closed. If I could get an access card. It doesn't work. No, dang it. Oh, is this the map we're supposed but to look at? this map is weird. Yeah. I mean, that's the same map we were looking at earlier, isn't it? But this map is weird. Okay. Well, let's go up this ladder at the very least. Maybe we can find more of those audio logs. Wait a moment. There's a note here. It's from land. At last, I found the way to break into Nemo's office. These stains, it's like they hide something written or drawn. Um, what am I supposed to get out of looking at this? Um... Is this the map we're looking for, or is this a different map? And what stains are we talking about? That's not useful now. Okay. Well, what... That, that means nothing to me. Okay. 
Find a magnifying glass to discover clues in the note. Okay. That that's good. That'll work. A miniature of one of the Nautilus's rejected designs. In the end, he made the ship much more aggressive. Ooh. The Nautilus, sailing Jules Verne's dreams. The submarine of 20,000 leagues under the seas is one of the most iconic settings and vehicles in all of world literature. Before the novel's release in 1870, submarines were small, dangerous vessels such as the famous Tortuga, the first military submarine used in the American Civil War in 1775. Electricity was then almost the Civil War. Okay, this game wasn't written by Americans. That was the Revolutionary War, guys. Electricity was then almost magical, and Nemo had tamed it to light, cook, and propel his boat, de describes Professor Aranax, the protagonist of the novel. At a time when most people still lit their homes with whale oil, Verne daz dazzled the imagination of the public, creating something that no one had ever been able to imagine before. A huge submarine powered by electricity, capable of moving faster than warships, and above all, with the ability to dive into the deepest waters. But all this technical mar marvel, civilized and cultured, with the huge library, lounges, a pipe organ, and all kinds of luxuries, had a dark side. It was a dangerous weapon. The seas were no longer safe if an unseen danger could rise from the depths and split ships in two. Moreover, under the iron rule of Captain Nemo, the Nautilus was a golden prison, not only for the protagonists of the novel, but also for the entire crew that accompanied him, because once aboard the ship, they never set foot on dry land again. Twenty years after the publication of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, humanity caught up with Verne's imagination, and in 1888... Okay, I'm thinking maybe they got the war correct, but the year incorrect. Um, yeah. The Civil War was in the 1860s. That's... They probably got the year wrong. In 1888, the first electric submarine was launched, the Peral, designed by Spanish engineer Isaac Peral. But thanks to his envious supporters in the Navy, this revolutionary device had an incomprehensibly short life. Very interesting. Cool. Love to learn little facts like that. Alright. Where can I find a magnifying glass? Oh. Um. That's not useful now. Okay. Was there a magnifying glass... I'm just gonna scour these first couple of floors a little bit. No. No need to go back to the Nautilus now. I must admit, it will. Cans of algae. Nothing interesting over here. Let's check the infirmary again. A hatch. These are the results. Vaccines. No. Well, I just wanted to do my due diligence. You never know. Sometimes, sometimes an item isn't useful to you yet, so the game doesn't let you pick it up until it is useful, which is annoying, I think. I think that if you want something, I think that if a character can use it eventually, they need to pick it up. What is this? Some kind of artist studio? Or like the kitchen? What's this? It looks like a pot boiling, like boiling water. There are lots of like pinups on the wall. Shower. Um... What's her name's room? I keep forgetting it. Nemo's room. Oh. There's his lift. Another hatch on the floor. And there was a door to the right. Wasn't there? I can't. Can't use it. Okay. What's my main... Find a magnifying glass. Am I gonna find that with Nemo? 
Because I can't go back to the Nautilus right now. I have to be in this, like, offshore place. That's not useful now. What? I must find some information before leaving. Okay. Well, where can I find a magnifying glass? Can I show it to a person, maybe? Maybe I can show it to a person. I told you before. Okay. Not you. Oh. I need something that can help me. Okay, it was right there. Select lens. Okay. If I get the blue lens, I'm sure that I will be able to read whatever is written here. Okay. Officer Land must have used these same lenses to write hidden messages on the map. Um, so I need to find the missing blue lens. So... I don't know. I can write that down. Write this down. Red. Left. Middle. Five times two two circle I for I I don't really know <laughs> I don't really know what these mean um, I don't know what these mathematical symbols like that's a plus sign obviously but what's that like it looks like a, a staple between the threes all right, I need to find the blue lens. I don't know where that would be, though. Um, I'll be able to get into the captain's office later, hopefully. I must find the blue lens first. Oh. What's that? I don't know what that is. That's not useful now. Okay. Um, could it be... I'm just going to scour everything again, I guess. Sorry to bother you. I'm looking for a blue lens that is missing from the map table loop. What do you need it for? Uh, Edriel has told me to check some maps and... Cedric normally uses it. Look inside his cupboards. Thank you. All right. Infirmary it is then. His cupboards. Here we go. That was pretty easy. Place the lens in the magnifying glass. Yeah, it's not so much a question of, like, when to use stuff. These are not difficult inventory puzzles. That's not useful now. Are you sure? That's not useful now. That's not useful now. Are you, are you sure? Okay. These are numbers and access card combinations. I can forge one with the tools available at Akos's workplace. I had to take note of these codes. Yes! Okay, so we took note of them, I guess. Um, you can see the revealed details of the note in the inventory. Okay. Can I? Um, okay. Um, I'm at 30 minutes, but I think I'll go a little longer. I feel like I haven't solved that many puzzles. Okay, Akon. This is your stuff over here, right? Hmm. 
modify the access card. Yes! Okay, that was pretty easy. Alright. Nemo's office access card. Alright. It, it really just showed it to me. There was no thought I needed to do on my end. It doesn't work. What? I need something that can help me. What do you mean it doesn't work? There we go. Oh, I was using the elevator access key. You've got some exotic stuff in here, Nemo. I've never seen Nemo with a turban. He's always in uniform. Personal memories. Wait. Here there are notes with the name Edriel on them. Meeting Edriel. In Captain Nemo's diary. Now the construction work is underway in the Nautilus, I have time to reconstruct the diaries the nation destroyed after I was arrested. Today I want to record the events that transpired on June 27th, 1851. At that time, the war had brought me to the only village on Dongzhu Island in the China Sea on a mission to train new recruits for the resistance. The desire to avenge the death of my beloved wife and daughter spurred me on. That day, news reached me that a Western woman had arrived on the island. Tired of spending the day surrounded by recruits, I went to see who she was. I found her in the living room. There was something about her that struck my soul instantly, not in a romantic way, but a kind of connection. We struck a, a conversation naturally, like lifelong friends. When I tried to elicit from her what she was doing on that lost island, she replied that she was making a stopover to get to Shanghai, but nothing more. As we said goodbye, she told me her name, Edriel. During the days of waiting, we took walks, shared meals, and had very interesting conversations in which we imagined what the depths of the oceans would offer to humanity and how this could change the world. I was amazed by the depth of her knowledge and a wisdom that belied her age. To my surprise, she also revealed herself to be an expert on Atlantis. One of those evenings, at the end of summer, and after a particularly long conversation, I found myself overflowing with imagination in the first image of an underwater vehicle, powered by the latest generation of engines and absolutely self-sufficient, came into my head. A device that would allow me to dive into the sea and leave the war behind. A whole new world just for me. The next morning, August 24th, as I went to our usual morning appointment with the first sketches of the Nautilus in my hands, I discovered that Edriel had left aboard the freighter she had been waiting for. I was sorry not to be able to say goodbye. I had always been certain that I would never see her again. I was wrong. Whenever we come for supplies at the main market in Macau, I always have a tea at the stall of Manny, a former artilleryman I met at the Battle of Okinawa. This morning, she was serving it to me with her toothless smile so dear to me. When I heard a familiar and almost forgotten voice, Captain, I hear you are building the Nautilus. Is there room for me and your crew? I turned, and there she was, just as I remembered her. She was one of us. Cool. Oh, he's got one of those clicky-clacky things. That's cool. A Grecian urn. A painting of a peacock. A sarcophagus. You gotta give that back, man. A kite. A Chinese kite. This bookcase is hiding something. Ooh, puzzle time. Select the shells in the correct order. Oh. So. Is it... Five by two, two by four. What? Um, three by three. Okay, so it's two by four. Oh, is it? Am I multiplying these? So eight. Um, And then nine would be next, so that would be three. No. Okay. 
Um, that's two, four. What what order am I supposed to do this in? I don't understand. Oh, I see. I see. I see. The little symbols in between them. They're not mathematical symbols. They're labeled around the corners with Roman numerals of their own. So, the little diamond is two by four. And next is little x, which would be five by two. Nice. Okay. And then would be the plus sign, which would be four by five. And last would be the little um, staple. Three by three. Yes. He always gets so excited when we solve a puzzle. Very cool. Okay. My headaches don't stop even for a minute. I believe my body rejects the ideas that let me boil inside my mind. I have conceived a god-awful plan to give the world a second chance. The war and the nation are going to end the future. Project H, as repugnant as it may sound, is the only way out for mankind. I am aware that if we take the flame and activate the aerial torpedoes, thousands of innocents will die. And I will have to carry on in my conscience with their deaths. But after the tragedy, a new and fairer world will thrive from it. I hope that that will ease my pain. Just like... It's cut off, but it can't be. His true objective is using my capsules to bomb the nation with the flame of Hephaestus. He wants to unleash a genocide. Oh my god, what am I going to do? I must stop him, but how? Right, we got a bio on Captain Nemo. It's a little long, but we can read it. The only certainty about the past of one of the most famous resistance leaders is that his wife and daughter were killed during the nation's invasion of the English Raj. His name rose to fame when, at the command of a small rebel group and against all odds, he thwarted in one blow the plans of the nation to conquer India. After that first victory, he traveled around the world, organizing resistance cells and thus complicating the nation's advances. During those years, he realized that, no matter how much military strategy the resistance developed, Without modern technology, they could never win the war. Thus, it was that the seed, the seed, it was that the seed of what was to become the Nautilus was planted in his head one night in the China Sea. We read about that in the Edriel diary entry. Unfortunately, his plans were interrupted in 1852 when he was captured by the nation's spies and imprisoned in Hamera's most terrible penitentiary institution, the Terror. The warden was an ambitious officer known as Bloody Raven who spared no hunger, labor, and torture to succeed in breaking Nemo, but to no avail. So, the Bloody Raven and Nemo have a very personal uh, beef with each other. Not just, oh, the Bloody Raven is part of the nation and Nemo doesn't like the nation. It's personal. With patience and the help of those who would later join the crew of the Nautilus, on August 15th, 1855, Captain Nemo led an escape that not only won his freedom, but also the destruction of the mine prison. Such an affront would not be forgotten by the Bloody Raven. After escaping, Nemo resumed the construction of the Nautilus and, a year later, set sail. Fed up with war and human cruelty, he debated whether to hide in the sea and immerse himself forever in its mysteries, or devote himself body and soul to the resistance. However, it was the sea that solved his dilemma, because in some underwater ruins he found the first clue to what would be the key to put an end to the nation forever the flame of Hephaestus. Since then, Captain Nemo has poured all his efforts into finding it. There is nothing that can distract him from his goal. No cracks in his way of seeing the world and planning his actions. He is, without a doubt, one of the most intelligent and cultured people in Hamera, and therefore also one of the most dangerous. All right. My opinion on Nemo as a character in this game is still a little mixed. He obviously has good intentions, but he's clearly an extremist. Um... And he's using Vern. So, Vern is obviously angry. And I'm going to have him confront Nemo in the next episode. So, I have been Mars. And I will be back with more Vern, the Shape of Fantasy. <laughs>